Good to see you on this uh, frigid Sunday morning, and I uh, pray that you just are enjoying the season that we are in right now as we're enjoying a winter wonderland all around us here in New Jersey. Anyone else excited about it? My kids were. I, they were more excited than mom and dad. They get to think about sledding when we're thinking about shoveling. So there are some people that enjoy this weather. My name is Pastor Chris, and I want to welcome everyone that's uh, watching us today uh, online or anywhere you find yourself in Woodbridge here in Scotch Plains. We are so thankful that we could come together on this Sunday. There's been a lot that has happened already, and we are just looking forward to what God has in store. Today's a significant day because it's the end of our season of fasting and prayer. We set aside the beginning of our year here at Evangel to seek the Lord and really to receive from him so that we can have vision and clarity and understanding on how we can walk forward uh, in the year that's in front of us because we want to give every year uh, to the Lord. We want him to lead us and to direct us and to guide us. Amen. And so you've chosen today to be here, and it's Vision Sunday here at Evangel. This is a time where we look back and look forward to what God has in store for us in the year that is ahead. But I want to give you one uh, just special announcement as we enter into God's Word this morning, that at the conclusion of the message, we're going to take part in communion together. Now, as you came to church this morning, whether here or in Woodbridge, uh, you saw the communion elements are out in the foyer. So if you didn't get a chance to grab those, please stop out and pick one of those up before the end of the message so that you could be ready uh, whenever we all take communion together. If you're watching from home, go ahead and prepare those elements and be ready because I want for us as a church to end this season of fasting and prayer by coming to the Lord's table and taking part in communion. Amen? Amen. So again, today is Vision Sunday. I want to welcome you. I'm so glad that you are here with us at Evangel Church. Our church has a vision to be changed lives, changing communities across the street and around the world. We believe that Jesus changes everything, amen? That our lives are not the same because of what he has done in us and through us. And we believe that what has happened to us cannot stay with us. It is meant to be extended to others, that lives, and not just lives, communities would be different as a result of where God has placed and planted us. We believe that that is meant to take place across the street and around the world. It is meant to happen all around us. And so that's what we have given our hearts to as a church. That is what we have uh, set our hearts on over the last several years, and it's where we're seeing God move. And as we consider that, um, it's something worth celebrating, amen? It's something worth us getting excited about as we consider all that God wants to do in us and through us as a church family. I want to bring you to a verse of scripture that's connected to our vision here at Evangel. It's found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6. And every time I read this verse, it, it just grabs a hold of my heart afresh and anew. Would you hear God's word this morning? Here's what it says. This same good news, somebody say good news, that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit, say bearing fruit, everywhere by changing lives just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. This is a picture of changed lives, changing lives, and changing communities across the street and around the world. It's in this verse of scripture that the Apostle Paul is speaking to a church 2,000 years ago in Colossae. And as he's speaking to them, he's saying, listen, what's so tremendous, church, is that what has happened in you hasn't stayed with you. The same good news that's come to you is now going out all over the world, and it's changing lives, and it's changing the world around us, and we have to make sure we continue to maintain a vision that what God wants to do is bigger than me, amen? It's bigger than us, and it's bigger than what we can imagine, and church, I stand here today, at the beginning of a new year, looking back on what was, considering this vision God has called us to, and I'm thankful to tell you, the same good news that's come to us is going out, and God is changing lives. God is at work. Amen? He's moving and he is working. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, challenges and difficulties. I know all the headlines that we've seen. I know all the things that can grab our attention in the days that we're living in. But I want you to still know there is good news. In fact, our name as a church, Evangel, do you know what that means? It literally means good news. The good news. And so this good news is going out across the street and around the world, and it's changing lives and changing communities. I want to celebrate just a little bit of that with you. As we look back on the last year, 
We have seen over 140 people come into a life-changing relationship with Jesus by calling on him as their Lord and Savior for the first time. So can we celebrate new people that have come into his kingdom over this last year? We have seen 56 adults and children baptized in water, declaring publicly that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. Come on, that's worthy of some celebration as well. Even in the midst of this past year and some of the challenges that there have been in meeting and coming together, we were able to host vacation Bible schools in Woodbridge and in Scotch Plains, and over 360 children came out to those VBSs, and we saw them hear the good news and experience so much. And our reach to the next generation has gone even beyond that. We've been able to have our youth ministry meeting weekly, and we just want to celebrate Josh and all the leaders of our next generation and what God's doing through them. They've been meeting and growing students coming to know the Lord. We've been able to pour out into students in our communities that aren't even a part of our church family. This past year, we gave out over 700 backpacks to kids going back to school that needed school supplies. 700 kids. Come on, that's a lot of mamas and, and, and parents and people praising God that their children were provided for. And also at Christmas time, 200 children received gifts this Christmas. Uh, blessed because of your generosity, church. You know, as we as a church are ready to respond, one of the things that I'm so thankful for is that we're not a church that waits whenever a crisis or a moment comes before us. As we see an opportunity, um, we've been quick to step out and allow the Lord to use us, even in the midst of very difficult situations. None of us expected that back on Labor Day weekend this year that Hurricane Storm Ida would wipe out some of our communities in Cranford, in parts of Scotch Plains here, up in Somerville, and in Boundbrook in different areas. We remember the flooding, do we not? How many people were displaced? Church, because of your heart to step out, we were able to spring into action immediately. We were beginning to go out in teams into people's homes. We were able to provide relief supplies and efforts. We partnered with Convoy of Hope and got truckloads of supplies to help families clean out their homes after the flooding. We were able to rent out a section of a hotel in Woodbridge and put up dozens of families for weeks and able to provide food in ministry to them. Some of them came to church services and were a part of it. Church, man, it was just amazing to watch the body of Christ just live out our identity, to say this is a moment we could step out. One of our mayors actually said, they said, man, this church, this evangel church, while the raindrops were still falling, they were starting to run into people's homes. Man, that's it. We want to just be living out our faith however we can. Amen? Just this last week, one of those families still touched base with us that we were able to serve and go into their house in Scotch Plains. And they reached out because they were going through something else they needed help with. And they knew there's a church that hears and cares and is available. I praise God that we could be the hands and feet of Jesus to our neighbors. Amen? And we did that in a very big way about a month after Ida when we stepped into the streets with service for service. And on that Sunday... In October, we gave up our Sunday morning service, and 900, yes, 900 of you hit the streets here and in Woodbridge and all around to serve our neighbors with the love of Christ. Come on, can we praise God for that as well? When it comes to giving beyond our walls, church, we've been able to support over um, 150 missionaries monthly, over $200,000 went out this last year, $250,000 to provide for our missionaries. Uh, almost $300,000 came in through Kingdom Builders to go to village transformation projects to help bring freedom to captives, to help bring ministry and clean water to new villages, to help provide in some incredible projects. We give God all the glory and praise God that we're able to see the vision being lived out even in the days that we are living in. And one of the biggest things that I want to celebrate is that this past year, I can't believe that's, oh, that hasn't even been a year yet, but on Easter Sunday, on April 4th of 2021, we became one church in multiple locations, and we launched Evangel Woodbridge. Come on, we're not even at our one-year anniversary yet, but Evangel Woodbridge, we're so excited for what God is doing, and this is just the beginning. God's desire and dream for what he's going to do in Woodbridge is so incredible. And so Pastor Leslie, the entire team there, let's get ready, because as we enter into year two, we're believing God has so many great things in store. So we're just excited, church, that God... God's vision is being lived out among us, that we continue to put our hand to the good work that he has called us to. And as that happens, we see lives, we see the body of Christ, we see the church growing and expanding. 
And we're not just about seeing Evangel Church expand and grow. We want to see the capital C Church, amen? The church expand. And so we have been partnering because of your generosity. Almost $100,000 went out just last year to come alongside of brand new churches being planted. One of them is in California, in Los Angeles. One of them is in Providence, Rhode Island. Another one of them is down in Pensacola, Florida, Rhythm Church. And last Sunday, Rhythm Church was launched with their very first services because of the generosity of you giving church. So can we praise God that over 150 people came to their first service and three people came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior just last Sunday. And they're meeting right now as we speak. So keep Pastor Vernell and the entire team at Rhythm Church in prayer. I'm sure we'll be hearing from them in the future. But man, that's what it's about. Changed lives, changing communities. Amen? Amen. So that's the good news. Is that good news? That's good news. But have you ever had someone come to you and say, I got some good news for you, and I got some bad news? I don't necessarily have all good news this morning. I know it's Vision Sunday, and I know there's a lot that we could celebrate and be excited about. But also, I think we can't ignore what we've been walking through, church, in this world. The last two years have kind of changed the world as we know it, has it not? Things have shifted and, and been reshaped and and there is, there is a different dynamic that is at work. There have been sustained challenges after challenges, the global pandemic, different kinds of tensions, all these things coming to the surface in a concentrated period of time. I have to tell you what I really believe as I pray and process is that the last two years has shaken the foundations of our world and our culture. And it's shaken the foundations of the church. Come on, in a moment in the middle of 2020, Churches shut down, could not meet for sustained periods of time. And you know what happened? Many churches, they, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to turn because everything about the church rose and, and fell on a Sunday morning gathering like the one we're in today. And so whenever that happened, it was as if the church had ended. Come on, Jesus' church was never called just to be a service on Sunday morning. We're a body. We're a group of believers. But something had happened where a pandemic was able to kind of bring the church to its knees. And it took a while to recalibrate and pivot. Oh, that word, how much we love that word, right? And try to figure out new ways. And I'm so thankful that at Evangel we have done everything we can to never let our services become interrupted, to keep a prayer meeting going through the entirety of the pandemic, to do everything we can to try our best to make service and ministry happen as much as we could. And we praise God for all the tireless efforts. But many churches suffered gravely during this season. Churches that used to exist in 2019 don't exist anymore today. Not like a few, like thousands of churches have closed. Pastors have become burnt out have walked away from the ministry. Pastors have fallen away into brokenness and other kinds of things. Man, the church has been shaken to its core in this last two years. And we look and we see and we could celebrate a lot of the good things. But I feel so convicted as we're coming into 2022 that the Lord Jesus is speaking a message to his church. He's waking us up to see something. And if we don't see it, we might be bound to repeat the same challenges in the future. Amen? So today I want to bring and just share a few words that God has put on my heart about what I believe he's calling us to as a church in 2022. And just as Jesus said so many times, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit of God wants to say. I really don't want you to hear what I have to say today. I want you to hear what I believe the Lord wants to speak to us today. Amen? So Lord, would you come and speak into our midst today as we open your word, Jesus, especially as we set our hearts on the very words that you spoke. Lord, many have tried to understand these through so many lenses over the centuries. But today, Spirit of God, we do ask that you will give us fresh insight into what you're saying, how it applies to the life that we're living, to the way that we're walking, to the season that we've been walking through. In your name we pray, amen. Would you open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 24? Matthew chapter 24, we're going to spend a few moments here. This is... A key passage of scripture, Matthew 24 and 25 are very significant chapters in the Bible because there are times where Jesus is speaking about future times, times that would come that were beyond uh, the, the lifetimes of these disciples, and they're speaking to moments that you and I may very well be experiencing in our own lives today. He's speaking about what it would be like before he came back again. Many of us know the story that Jesus came, that he lived a sinless life. 
born of a virgin, died on the cross, rose from the dead on Easter. But what many forget to realize is Jesus also promised he's coming back again one day. How many know that he is coming again? That the Lord is returning. He said, I, just as I went, I will come again for my church. He has not left us alone. He's left us with a promise. And as every generation goes by and he hasn't returned yet, it's easier and easier for a group of people to fall asleep to this reality and think, it won't happen in my lifetime. It won't happen in our day. And so in Matthew chapter 24 and 25, Jesus begins to outline, hey, there are some things that are going to happen. And when those things begin to happen, it is an alarm clock to a generation to say, wake up, the Lord's coming soon. And so this is what Jesus begins to outline. It all starts in Matthew 24, verses 1 and 2, when he's walking around the temple grounds. And he's walking around the temple, and look what it says. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed to the different temple buildings. And Jesus responded, do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth, they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of the other. So the religious institution of the time that, that was everything to the Jewish people, Jesus said there's a time coming that there will be such a shaking that everything will come down. And they, they didn't know when that would happen, how that would happen, but we know from history it happened at 70 A.D. Within 30-some years of Jesus speaking this, the temple was destroyed. You go to Israel now, the temple is no longer there because it was destroyed in 70 A.D. and has not yet been rebuilt. And so not one stone left on top of the other, just as Jesus said. He said, when that shaking comes, that which is religious can just kind of crumble away. And when I read that and I think about the last two years and I think about verses of Scripture where it says a time is coming when everything that can be shaken will be shaken, don't you feel like the last two years there's been a lot of shaking? And some have been shaken to their core. Some have been overwhelmed. Some have suffered with a lot of different things. There's been a shaking. That shaking has also happened to his church. And guess what? It says the only thing that can remain is what's unshakable. And so as that shaking happens, there's a lot of things that can start to come undone. There's a lot of cracks and crevices that can be shown. There's a lot of foundations that are being tested. And during those times, as that happens, as the challenges come, they test the fortitude and the foundations to see if what's unshakable is really there or if it's built on the wrong things. So Jesus begins to say to his disciples privately, say, tell us, when will it happen? What will this look like, Jesus? Like, when? When are you going to come again? When are all these bad things going to happen? Because you know what? We always want to be able to predict this. We want to be able to know with certainty. Come on, wouldn't you love to know? Jesus, just give me the date and time. Like, when are you coming back? And Jesus says, I'm not going to tell you the day or the time. But then he says, listen, don't let anyone mislead you. People are going to come in my name and lead people astray. Many are going to be deceived. There are going to be war and threats of war, famines and earthquakes. And when we think through history, and even in our lifetime, a lot of these things have been seen. But Jesus says, I'm not giving you a date. But he says this, I want you to know that when you feel these things, you need to wake up and recognize the Lord's return is near. You need to recognize it. In verse 8, Jesus literally says, when you see these things, he said, it's only the first of the many birth pangs, but more can come. And so right now, I'm not here to share a message of prediction with you and say, I can pinpoint on the calendar when the Lord Jesus is coming again. But here's what I am here to share a message with because I believe the whole purpose of 24 and 25 of Matthew was not so that his followers could predict his coming, but so that they could be prepared for his coming. And we have to, as a people, move away from just fixating on predictions to preparation. That's what it means. When you see these signs, get ready. Make sure your heart is ready. Make sure you're not asleep. Make sure you haven't hit the snooze button, but that you lean in. So today, I'm not here to tell you, okay, well, if you connect verse 3, that's this, and this right here is code. No, I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to share a message that I believe the Spirit of God's put in my heart. Church, it's time for us to wake up. It's time to make sure that we are ready. And so as we continue to read this passage, and I'm praying, Lord, what is it you want to show? I get to verse 13, and this is the words that Jesus shared, and I believe this is the vision he's calling us to as a church. He said, all these things will happen, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures. The one who doesn't come undone when the world's coming undone. 
the one who stands strong in the face of adversity, the one who is unchanging in every season and circumstance and difficulty, he will be saved. He will not just survive, he will thrive. And I began to pray because as we read verses like this, as we consider this reality, in church, if you're a follower of Jesus and you know him not to be a liar, then you must take what he says very seriously. We cannot fall asleep and just grow into some comfortable Christianity. Can I tell you the last two years have shaken comfortable Christianity out of us. That's what it's meant to do. We're not meant to be comfortable. We're meant to truly be his, to live the life that he has called us to. So what does that look like? What's the vision? What's the desire? And my heart really has become convicted as we've entered into this year. Because I know for me, when I read verses like this, I think about myself, my life. I think about my wife and my kids. And I think about our family. And I want to say, Lord, I want us to endure till the end. I want us, Lord God, to be ready whenever that time comes to know that we're standing fully ready, busy doing the things that matter to your heart whenever you would return. And all of us, if you're a follower of Jesus, you need to think about that. But can I challenge you today that there's another layer that I have to think about. There's something else that occupies my prayer that my heart goes to the Lord over. What keeps me up at night, church, is not just will I be ready, will my family be ready, will will my children be ready? But here's the question I'm asking. Lord, will your church be ready? Will Evangel Church be ready? Will this body of believers be ready? I want you to know, the Bible says very seriously, pray for your leaders. Pray for me. Pray for our pastors. Pray for our team. You know why? It says they keep watch over you as men who must give an account. One day I'll have to stand and give an account for my life, but also an account for those God has entrusted, the church. And so when we walk through seasons like COVID and the challenges, and I think about some that have just drifted wherever they might find themselves today, it breaks my heart because I say, Lord, I want to make sure that we are a church that is built to last. We're a church that endures until the end, not just survives and gets to the end of the moment when we see Jesus and says, well, we kind of made it by the skin of our teeth. I don't want us to be a church that survives. I want us to be a church that thrives in every season. We're 108 years old, and guess what? We don't look like a lot of churches that are 100 plus years old, and I praise God. A lot of churches that are 100 years old don't have that many children to dedicate. Can I be real with you? And I so, I so thank God that we've seen generation to generation God has been faithful to us. But I said it last week, we're only one generation away from everything coming to a screeching halt. It's only one generation away. And so we must, in every generation, catch a vision for what Jesus desires his church to be. And I truly believe it's this, that we would be a church that is built to last. A church that thrives, not just survives, in every season as we walk through this life. That the good news of the kingdom will be preached all throughout the whole world, as Jesus says, and all will hear. Then the end will come, that we will be busy doing his work. So what will that look like? What does that look like for us? That's what I want us to look at, because our vision for 2022, how we're going to live out this vision of changed lives, changing lives, and changing communities across the street and around the world, is that we would learn what it means in 2022 to be a church that is built to last that there are key things built within the DNA and fabric of who we are as followers of Jesus and as a church community that can withstand any test and trial. Because I want you to know, if there are times and seasons that are coming that are as or more difficult than what we just endured, and I believe Jesus to be true, so I believe there will be, then what will his church look like after round two, three, seven, eight? Instead, we look at this everything we've been through and saying, Lord, we're not going to keep living the same way. We're going to see where the cracks, the difficulties, where the areas are that need to be strengthened, and we want to apply our intentional growth in those areas as a church so that we truly can be built to last, so that we are doing the things that matter to the heart of God. Are you with me today, church? So that's what we're going to explore. Over the next uh, month of February, we're going to go into a series that we're calling a vision series. It is literally going to unpackage what it means to be a church that's built to last, for us to be able to uh, thrive in every season God puts before us. And we're going to unpackage some of these characteristics, and these are going to be focus points for us as a church in the year ahead. But I want to give them to you just briefly today in the message. The first one is this, and they're in no particular order. The first one is biblical community. Would you say biblical community? 
This is so vitally important. This goes beyond Bible studies and just group gatherings. It goes to truly being a people that share life together. It means this, that we look more and more like the church we read about in the book of Acts. What happens is they met home to home, house to house. They met in each other's homes, in courtyards, wherever they could. And you know what happens when persecution breaks out? Do you know what happens if they want to come and lock a church door, a building? It doesn't really matter because the church keeps thriving. That whenever it goes there, it just continues to move into homes. Do you want to know the biggest church in the world right now? The the fastest growing, the, the, the strongest, most thriving church? It's in China. There are millions and millions of followers. And guess what? They don't have very many church buildings at all. Where are they meeting? They're meeting in each other's homes. They're growing. They're, they're expanding. They're multiplying. They're making disciples. They're growing. But they truly understand this idea of biblical community. Can I tell you, if you think biblical community is the 30 seconds that you greet each other before you're seated on a Sunday morning, you have no idea. You have no idea all that God would want to do. Do you want to know what biblical community looks like? You're sick. And your brothers and sisters that have been walking with you and praying for you, they come around you. They begin to support you. We had stories of this happening in our life groups. When people got COVID, they were part of our church body. You know who the first people responding were? People in their circle. Because they had community with them. They walk life with them. People that can talk, real talk to each other, that can pray for each other, that can walk with each other, care for one another, fulfill the law of Christ, carry each other's burdens, stand in the gap for one another. When you start to see biblical community, you will, you will experience it and taste it, and you'll never want to go back to anything else. Because if not, we're just kind of like going through the pleasantries, and, and, it, and it doesn't allow there to be a depth that God really wants. And I want you to know, as a church, we've grown to the point as a church body that it is, you can't foster biblical community in a Sunday morning gathering with this many people. You have to be in a circle with someone. You have to have the people that are part of your church family that will walk with you and share with you and pray with you and go deeper with you in your walk with God. If we don't have that, we're missing out on everything God wants for us. When you start to taste and experience it, it's like nothing else. This past few months, uh, we've seen many people that have gotten sick and other challenges. One church in particular has been hit pretty hard with, with a story of someone getting ill, and it's ICC in Staten Island. Pastor Ron Squibb and his wife Emma, a pastor there and lead an incredible congregation that loves the Lord and is uh, seeking after him. But Emma came down with COVID several weeks ago, and it got from bad to worse, and she was hanging on for life. And they called the church to prayer. They called each other to prayer. They called any other path. We've all been praying. But then what you started to see while we're all praying is groups of people, parts of that community start to gather in the foyer of their church at the altars, day and night, just crying out to God, just praying, prevailing in prayer. Then you started to see some parts of the church body, some people that are close and leaders. They started to show up at the hospital. They weren't allowed in the hospital. It's okay. They just stood and they just lifted their hands towards the doors of that hospital. And they began to pray in Jesus' name for healing to sweep through those hallways and for Emma to live and not die and proclaim the goodness of God. And, and then guess what happened? God started to turn things around. Today, Emma's a living miracle. She's a miracle of someone who's coming through and coming back and keep praying for her recovery. And I praise God for that miracle. But I praise God for what I saw because as they come through this season, they've experienced a depth of now biblical community that looks a lot more like Jesus and his church that he built than so many other things that I've seen. And so when you look at that, you say, man, when the hard times come and when we can be a people that instead of being isolated and separated, we come together and see the power of God move, that's biblical community. That's what I desire for us to grow into more intentionally. We have had almost 50 life groups. We've grown in our number of life groups, even through the pandemic. We praise God for that. My desire for this upcoming year, we double it. Let's get to over 100 life groups meeting here at Evangel. 100 opportunities to foster biblical community. Step in church. Watch what God will do as we make intentional steps in that way. The second area that we want to look at is becoming disciples. Really learning what it means to grow deeper roots in Christ, to be rooted and grounded in his love, in his power, and what it means not just to say a prayer for Jesus to forgive us of our sins, but every day to be shaped and transformed more into his image, to go and walk a life that he has prepared for us. The whole life of discipleship is all about becoming, every day becoming more like him. We're going to learn what that means in the weeks to come. We want to learn what that means in deeper measure in 2022. The third one is building leaders. 
building leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And you know this, that God has anointed and appointed leaders he desires, desires to lead in his kingdom. That his church is not meant to be on, on, on just a bunch of people that come together and are just able to fulfill a task, but that they are meant to be people of influence and leaders in his kingdom. I believe God wants to elevate so many in this season. He wants you to know he has a purpose for your life, and he wants to rise you up and build you up so that you could be everything he has for you to be in his kingdom. So our heart is going to be to see more leaders built up, to be intentional about developing people so that you can walk and actually fulfill the purpose that God has on your life in the church, in the world, ultimately in his kingdom, wherever that might be. But that's intentional, amen? That's meant to be a developing of our character, our walk with him, a depth so that wherever God would rise us up to, we have the character to sustain us, amen? The next one, bridging generations. Bridging generations. See, here at Evangel, the reason we are where we are today is because we've had generations that have continued to take on the mantle, to continue to go forward. We have kept our eyes forward, that we're saying, and we've said it before, the children, the youth, they're not the church of tomorrow, they're the church of today. we got to see them come into the kingdom. we got to pour ourselves and our resources into them. But I believe God wants to elevate that in this season that we're in, that we'll literally learn what it means to bridge generations so that every generation is bigger and better and stronger. I shared last week about Elijah and then Elisha. Elijah, he had Elisha come alongside him, another generation. Do you want to know what happened? A double portion of that anointing. Elijah had 12 miracles. Elisha had 24 miracles. One generation to another. This incredible transference, this incredible passing of a mantle from one generation to another. But then we have Elisha had no one. There was no one coming after him. There was no generation to come. And you know what happened? All that anointing, all that power, all that influence buried in a grave. Not on our watch. Amen, church? We want to see every generation bigger, better, stronger, moving forward into everything that God has. And here's what you'll see, and we'll talk about it in the weeks to come. But in the end times, this is literally what the Lord says will happen as the Spirit of God moves in his church. He said, I'm going to turn the hearts of fathers back to the children, children back to the fathers. I will pour out my Spirit on every generation. Young men, old men, going to see visions, dream dreams. There is a turning of hearts in a bridging of generations so that one generation is able to hand off to the next. And we're able to continue to go forward. Amen? We're seeing that in some areas, but God wants to elevate it. I love seeing the, the couples ministry that raised up this last year. We've poured into 17 couples that have now made it their goal and focus to mentor other couples that are going through challenges or just newly married so that their marriages can thrive and go further. That's one generation pouring into another. Amen? That's one generation giving their shoulders to another. That's what God's calling us to. And the final one, I'll invite the worship team to come is what it's really all about in Jesus' kingdom. Bearing fruit. Bearing fruit. We are going to lean in to say, Lord, we want to be a people, a church that bears good fruit, that bears the fruit that you have desired for your church. That's what it says in Colossians 1.6. It said, this same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere. The Bible says they'll know us by our fruit. There is a fruitfulness that's meant to flow out of the life of a believer. And this will be a year, 2022, of bearing fruit. We've had to see a lot of things cultivated in 2020 as we went through that pandemic. We've had to see a lot of new foundations being laid in 2021. But this will be a year where we can see God's faithfulness and fruit being born in the lives of the people that are willing to lean into him. The only way, though, that I can find in the words of Jesus, that you bear fruit, two things. One, Jesus says, by remaining in him. Remain in me and I'll remain in you and you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you could do nothing. So it's all about that intentional discipleship, drawing in, leaning in, being rooted and grounded in Jesus. We bear fruit. Second is by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit bears fruit within us. We literally see the fruit of the Spirit. That's the work of the Spirit that tangibly becomes a part of our character and a part of our life. Then we begin to see the supernatural move of the Holy Spirit bearing fruit that's eternal, that will bring people into the kingdom. And we see the works of the Holy Spirit moving and people being healed or, or transformation happening in people's lives. It all is a work of the Spirit of God within us. 
So there's two things there, drawing near to Jesus and surrendering ourselves to be led by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as he guides us. So for us, the best place that we want to lean in like that isn't just here on Sundays where we proclaim the message, where we share and worship and sing. It's on Wednesday night where we get into the presence of God and we come face to face and say, Lord, shape us, fill us, use us. Here's what I'm believing in 2022, that our Wednesday night prayer meeting is going to turn into an upper room that God is going to meet us as we cry out to him, that the Spirit of God would fall, that we would foster an atmosphere where we can see the powerful move of God among us, where we can see him begin to open blind eyes, where we can see the Spirit of God speaking through us. Church, it's going to be a place where we can cry on the Lord and cry out and see him move in our midst. That's the place of power. That's the place of fire, our prayer meeting. I can't, can't express enough how important that is. Prayer isn't something we do for 21 days. As a church, we pray until something happens. That's a part of our culture and DNA. So I invite you to come out on Wednesday night. It's the most important time we can gather as a church. Let's fill that prayer meeting. Let's watch the fruit that comes from that because we're drawing near to Christ and calling on him and leading into the Spirit's work in our lives. Jesus says this in John 15, 8. It's to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As we call upon the Lord today, as we look to him for the future, I'm believing that the Lord is giving us a picture of a church that is built to last, that we can continue to thrive and move forward and be strengthened in every way so that whenever we go through storms or difficulties or challenges, we will not just endure, we will overcome by the power of God working in our lives. Jesus said, when you see these times, these troubling times that come, take heart, I've overcome the world. Lord Jesus, would you make us ready? Would you build within us, Lord God, that which will endure to the end? Will you strengthen everything within us, Lord God, so in any season of shaking or difficulty, your bride will stand strong? Lord, we surrender ourselves to you afresh and anew today. And we ask you, Lord God, to fulfill this work in our hearts and in our lives as we intentionally focus in these areas. Thank you, Lord. Would you take those communion elements this morning as we get ready to close? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And God's word shares with us the power of this moment that we're going to take. And what a fitting way for us to end our season of fasting and prayer by coming to the Lord's table. Paul says, I passed on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, The Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. He then broke it into pieces and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Come on, as you look at that bread this morning, wherever you are, would you hear the words of Jesus? This is my body given for you. Would you allow yourself to be over overcome by this truth and reality. Jesus gave himself for you. He loved you that much. He endured the cross. He scorned its shame because there was a joy that was set before him. It was the joy of your salvation, of you being forgiven, you being redeemed, you being healed, transformed, set apart. Oh, if we could only know how great and deep his love is for us today. Let the Lord in this moment as you come to him, coming to the end of a fast, coming to the end of this moment, maybe it's your first time in church in a long time. Just let the Lord speak into your heart the depths of his love towards you right now. If you feel far from him, call on his name right now. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of those things, Lord, that have turned my attention from you. I renew my faith, my trust in you today, Lord. I know that you died for my sins, and I turn my heart to you, Lord. Come on, talk to him today. If you're far from him, you don't have to be. He's he's standing ready with arms wide open. Turn from sin, turn from brokenness. Come to him. Right now, turn your heart towards him. Jesus, thank you for your body broken for us, Lord God, as we gaze upon the cross and see 
that's what we deserved, and yet you took it on, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I lay everything I am at the foot of the cross today. And I thank you for your body that was broken for me. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. Let's take that cup. Lord, we thank you for this cup today. It says, for as often as we drink it, we're making a proclamation. Because this cup is a new covenant. That's what Jesus said. It's a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with his blood. Jesus, the wages of sin is death. That's what your word teaches. We've all sinned. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Jesus, as we take this cup, we're reminded of the promise and the power of what you've done to save us and to redeem us. Today, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your forgiveness in my life. Thank you for your blood shed on the cross. Thank you that I'm a new creation because of you. Thank you, Lord God, that my sins are separated as far as the east is from the west. Thank you today, Lord God, I could stand because I stand in the power of what you've done for me, Lord God. And Lord, today, as we come through this season of seeking you, we reset our hearts on you like never before. And Lord God, we say, Lord, where you lead us, we will follow. Guide us, Lord God. Strengthen us. Pour your, your love into our hearts, Lord God. Open our eyes to see the things that matter to your heart, Lord God. Transform us from the inside out as we walk with you. Point out those areas within us that are offensive to your heart, Lord God. Forgive us and shape us as we lay them down, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's drink together. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, For every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And so just as we've been talking about today, that, Lord, whenever you return, Lord, may your church, may your people be announcing and proclaiming that it's all about you, that you're the one that came to save and to seek us out, to change us and to change the world around us. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that your anointing and your touch would rest upon your people, that, Lord, you'd speak in them and through them, that you would strengthen them with this word, with this vision, with this call, Lord God. Lord, may we grow deeper roots. May we, Lord God, connect to you and to one another, Lord God, like never before this year. May we see every generation growing and becoming all you've created them to be, Lord God. May we, Lord, see leaders and your people be poured into and developed to be released into their God-given potential. And Lord, as we cling to you, Holy Spirit, as we yield to you, would you bear much fruit in our midst, Lord God? of that that matters to your heart. Oh, Lord, be with us today in each day, Lord, as we walk forward. Lord, we give you this year that's ahead, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, would you praise the Lord today? Thank you so much for being a part of our service this morning. I want to just invite you one last thing. Come out tonight. We got our Selah night of worship, 6 p.m. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have a time in his presence to just believe him to do so much. So I hope you'll come and join us. Join us on Wednesday night for our prayer meeting. Be here next Sunday as we kick off this brand new series, Built to Last, our vision series that unpackages what we're walking into in 2022. If you need prayer, our prayer team's up front. You can come on forward. If not, you can continue to worship or you can make your way out the doors. We'll see you next Sunday. We can't wait to see what God has in store. God bless.